Morning Show. And here he is, a self-educated man who is a living testimonial as to why you should stay in school. My uncle, your hero, Red Green. Thank you. Well, I'll tell you something. I was walking around downtown this morning, and I noticed that Ralphie's gas station is completely gone, okay? It's been replaced by a convenience store slash banking machine slash drive through video outlet. I guess Ralphie couldn't make any money in the gasoline business. Wow, that's impossible, Uncle Red. Everything around here runs on gas, including most of the lodge members. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I mean, he sold, like, hundreds of gallons of gas to you guys every week. Well, to be honest, Harold, I guess a lot of the guys were taking gas from the self-serve and then not paying for it. Ralphie's pumps aren't self-serve. They are at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> in today's show, Ranger Gord is wound up just a little too tight. I'm gonna grind a great big hole in the bottom of the possum van. Garth Harville's got something in the attic, but it's not worth much. And Winston Rothschild goes on and on and on. <laughs> Better watch your allergies, Harold. I might have spilled a bit of gasoline on myself. Well, don't come near me or the stove. I'm particularly allergic to human torches. <laughs> You try something, where does it get you? All you want to do is to run a gas pipeline from the gas station in Port Asbestos right to the lodges, downhill all the way. Of course, the government steps in, says it's illegal to run gasoline through East Tross. <laughs> I'm not sure how long the duct tape would have held anyway. Well, maybe I'm a little bit glad we have a government. <laughs> I know I'm glad we have a fire department. Now, I don't know what you heard, but I'm telling you, that was an accident. Those bathtubs were porcelain, and there wasn't a leaky one in the bunch. What are you talking? Whoa! What are you talking about? Oh, well, we had a bunch of bathtubs on a flatbed up to Port Asbestos, and we, we filled them all with gas, and we to, it didn't—it didn't go real well. Perhaps they were a little too full. Uh, not after the first corner. Uh, the real problem hit when uh, Junior Singleton flicked his flaming butt out the window and then his lit cigarette. Oh, good. No, 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 no. I got those in the wrong order. Well, of course, Bill's solution to being uh, out of gas is to find another mode of transportation, so he's going back to the old west, the old cowboy. Not a real quality horse you got there, Bill, but he's not a real quality cow. What do you got? Oh, he's got a jaw and a big tobacco. Oh, I got you. I got you. He's doing going to do the spittoon thing. Oh, my God. Yeah. This is just, you know, Bill. Oh, you're fine. All right. <laughs> Spring came early this year. All right. And he's going to he's gonna fire that into the pail. Okay, Bill. Get a big jaw there. Get a man with man size. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, Bill? No, no, you, no, you missed. You missed on that. You missed. You'll find it over. It's over in that area. Yeah, it's funny, eh? Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> He'll be back later. She scrimped and saved for two years to buy that car. She did not give you permission to drive it, but you had to go behind her back and take it out for a drive anyway, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And you had to go to the lumber yard, mm -hmm. and you had to buy two sheets of drywall, <laughs> and you had to try and cram them into that tiny little hatchback, didn't you? <laughs> and you had to rip the upholstery in a roof. Now what are you going to tell her? You're not going to tell her anything. Not yet. First of all, you're going to ditch that drywall. Then you get back in that car, drive over to her nephews. You know the ones, those rotten little children of Satan. You're going to take them out and buy them ice cream and chocolate and pop. Especially chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> and make sure they spend at least an hour inside the car. Yeah, yeah. When those three little hyenas are done, that your rip on the roof line's gonna look like an afterthought. <laughs> and you're off the hook. How can she blame you? You were only trying to be nice to her nephews. It's not your fault they're rotten, destructive little sociopaths. <laughs> They're family. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
lying on the boathouse, staring at the stars. No noise, no horn, no exhaust. At least none of it from cars, right? <laughs> I don't let anyone up here. It's my own private little nest. But now that I've thrown my back out and I'm pretty much paralyzed from the eyebrows down, I'm valuing privacy less and less. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, don't believe that stuff you read in the newspapers. The reason that we have a fuel shortage in this country is because our gas tanks aren't big enough. <laughs> so this week in Handyman Corner, I'm gonna put a man-sized gas tank into the possum van. <laughs> now, originally I was thinking of just uh, popping this 45-gallon unit in there, but uh, I don't think this thing's really gonna do the job. It's not gonna hold enough gas to cover off the gas mileage problem that I have with the van. I suppose I could change the plugs and points once in a while, but I don't want to get into that. So instead, what I need is a gas tank the same size as the whole van. Now, of course, once I fill this unit up with gasoline, I need some way to get that gas into the real gas tank to go up into the engine. No problem. Just hack a hole in the floor and let gravity do the work. <laughs> Of course, now, before we start throwing a couple of thousand gallons, you know, into this unit, you want to plug up anywhere that uh, gasoline might seep out around the windows and so on, because you don't want to be driving down the highway with the gas just roaring out of them. <laughs> Not at today's prices. <laughs> so what I've done is I've gone all the way down the dashboard here, covered up wherever I thought the gasoline might leak around, uh, the headlight switch and the windshield washers. And of course, I got the heater, the heater vent there. She's all closed up and. Uh, Especially did a little extra duct tape around the uh, dimmer switch, because I know the floor is kind of rusty there. But, uh, <laughs> that should hold her, and, uh, and do it properly. You know, that, that, that'll that take you maybe uh, 10 to 15 minutes to do it right, you know? <laughs> and of course, once you've done that, then you got to go down the outside and do the windows and the doors and, of course, all the rust holes. <laughs> all right, I'll tell you, that is one tight-sealed van. Now all I have to do is go down to the local fill-up station and load her up with about a year and a half supply of gasoline. So remember, if the women don't find... <laughs> oh, golly. All right, all right, okay. Rethink, rethink. This is good, this is good, because the mark of a true handy man is his ability to adapt to, you know, changing conditions, safety regulations, that kind of thing. <laughs> so what am I going to do here? This be full of gas. Maybe a snorkel unit of some kind, or maybe radio control. I know, I know, you know the flying bridge, flying bridge like they have on those cabin cruisers. So what I'll do is I'll, yeah, I'll move the whole dashboard unit up onto the roof and, okay, no, no, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need a whole new dashboard unit. Uh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> well, this has gotta be a piece of good news for all you small car owners out there. Now, uh, I've hooked everything up, obviously, to run the, uh, run the whole unit, uh, and I duct tape her on. You might wanna weld it, but if you are gonna weld it, I would suggest that you do all your welding before you fill the van up with gasoline. Right? And you might want to keep an eye out for the maximum height on the low bridges and so on. <laughs> Let's give her a little test drive right now. So remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <laughs> Stay tuned for Ranger Gord pretending he's a tree. I have to exaggerate his IQ, I guess. Any day now, you'll be shaving or scraping chunks of pizza off your forehead. <laughs> you'll look at yourself in the mirror and you'll see that your face is covered with wrinkles. All around your mouth, around your eyes, up over your ears. And when you furrow your brow, it looks like a rump roast made out of corduroy. <laughs> now, wrinkles is caused by one thing, one thing only. You got too much skin there. <laughs> You go to a cosmetic surgeon, they're happy to cut the skin off for you. Or if you're on a budget, I guess you could duct tape wires to the skin and then tighten it up with a little winch hidden in your hat. <laughs> but I'll tell you a simple way to get rid of wrinkles. Put on weight. <laughs> oh yeah, you just eat and eat and eat until you fill up all that extra skin. <laughs> you see, uh, Mother Nature gave you that skin thinking you'd be a lot fatter by now. Don't let her down. <laughs> It's just that simple. Fat is the safest and simplest cure for wrinkles. You ever see a wrinkled pig? No, sir. So just go nuts, fill your face every day, and then one day when your heart explodes and your friends are leaning over your extra wide coffin, they'll comment on how young you look. Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together.
Today, Ranger Guard is going to teach us how to avoid being attacked by grizzly bears. That's right, Red. In the 16 years I've been manning Fire Watchtower 13, I've never once been mauled by a bear. Oh, sure, I've been attacked by foxes and wolves and deer and elk and badgers and, of course, squirrels. A uh, hummingbird will give a good nip. Oh, and that uh, chipmunk scar is just starting to heal over. Let me oh, show no, you. No, 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 we don't need to see that guard, no. <laughs> but I've never once, not once, been mauled by a bear. Why do you think that is, Red? Good sense, I would say. No, no way. No. no, camouflage. Oh, okay. Now, bears like to eat fish and grub. So I never, ever dress up like a fish or a grub. Okay? As much as I'd like to sometimes, I avoid it. Instead, I dress up like a tree. Oh, yeah. Now, these are ash branches. All right. Okay? And an ash looks like this. See that? Yeah. I'm an ash. Took the words right out of my mouth, Sarah Gordon. <laughs> now, you hold the uh, branches like this, yeah. uh, like this, or even, you know, as much as this. You're not going to fool a rabbit, let alone a bear, okay? So the key to dressing up like a tree is the shape. All right. Thank you very much, Gordon. No, Appreciate wait. I have, uh, I have another one here. Now, uh, this is my favorite. So if you just hold that, Red. Yeah. Okay, I'm going right. to take this in. Yeah. Hold it in your fingers like that. Okay. Here we go. Watch okay. this. Okay, okay, okay. Watch this. Oh, yeah. Isn't this fun? Oh, my God. Huh? <laughs> Watch this. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is, must be my favorite, I think. It must be. <laughs> Yeah. Okay? Yeah. What am I? Oh, don't ask me questions like that, Corey. <laughs> I'm a white birch bark. Oh. You see that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You didn't recognize me. No. Huh? Well, what, what were you thinking? Oh, well, same as always. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, fumes getting to you, are they, Harold? Well, <laughs> I was clean when I put it on. <laughs> Boy, the whole town's going that way. People wearing disguises so they can steal gas from each other. And people are hoarding their gas supply. I tell you, a gallon of premium unleaded is 30 bucks on the black market now. Yeah, but if you buy 10 gallons, you get a free black market car wash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we've got a real energy crisis here. It's just like the 70s, but we don't get the fun of blaming foreigners. <laughs> I heard that one guy, he ordered a pizza, right? And when the driver went up to the door to get the money, he was waiting there for the people, someone went out and siphoned gas from his car. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, that's bad. Oh, yeah. 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 People are putting walking gas caps on their lawnmowers. It's gotten ridiculous. No kidding. I bought five gallons of gas from Flinty McClintock. Turned out to be apple cider. <laughs> Mind you, the van still ran pretty good. <laughs> the exhaust smelled like a Waldorf salad. <laughs> Welcome to the expert portion of the show. And on this week's expert portion of the show, we have two experts, my Uncle Red and his good friend, Mr. Winston Rothschild. All right, here's our first letter, and it goes as follows. Uh, dear experts, my dad says I should stay in school and get an education. I want to get out and get my dream job now. What do you think? Oh, that's no contest. Get out there and get the job. Man, I'll tell you, a degree is just a piece of paper. <laughs> See, just a second now, the road to a higher education is not a one-way street, eh? Take me, for example, I took an alternative route. After I quit high school and started up, you know, Rothschild Sewage and Septic Sucking Services, <laughs> it was after that that I got my college degrees, you know, in my spare time. There are a number of great learning institutions to pretty much anybody who can read the back of a matchbook cover. <laughs> right now, I'm working on a degree from MIT. Not the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. No, Murray School of Tennis. <laughs> see, the way I see it is if I get my uh, PhD from Murray's, that'll be nine in total. Oh, yeah, nine, that's right. Winston Rothschild, PhD, LLX, SOL, IOU, DOA, VCR, PDQ, QT, and of course, TNA. <laughs> Now, look at you, Winston. You got all those degrees. Look what you're doing. You're running the sewage business. That's what I'm saying. The education is not worth it. Just go for the job. Wait a minute. You don't have any education. All you're doing is hosting this show. You're no better than me. So you're saying, like, we're both in the sewage business? <laughs> well, yeah, but I take it away. <laughs> Meanwhile, back with Buffalo Bill. And I mean, ow, ow. 
Buffalo in the sense of he's going to need wings at some point in his life. <laughs> Bill's got to look out, look out, look out, look out. Line. You know, one thing about going to a playground with a fellow like Bill, you really don't need to get involved. You can just kind of stay well back. There's something for you kids at home. You stay well back. You see a man like this at the park. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. Ah. And I've been standing there trying to figure out what exactly he has in mind, thinking that it must be something. What is it? Oh, yeah, teeter totter. Yeah, teeter totter. Yeah. What are you doing? Oh, funny. That's very funny. So I get, as usual, the short end of the stick. That's fine. I'll get on that. I'll show you who's got the short end of the whatever. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Bill. Oh, I feel terrible. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, 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 that's smart, you know. Then he gets Ooh. off it. No, no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gosh, these playgrounds are fun, aren't they? Anyway, we got that unit apart, and I uh, got Bill's horse, and Bill's bringing the idols home. Anyway, he mounts the whole unit up there on the whole wagon that we had, and uh, stole something from the handyman work branch, didn't you there, Bill? What's, what are we doing here? What's going on? How's this work going? You're gonna sit on, yeah, all right, what's gonna happen? He's gonna sit on that end, okay, the spring's attached there, so, yeah, okay. Where's that pipe? The pipe goes down here, and, oh, I know, I know, the old railroad car thing where you hand pump, if you can get this thing pumping, you don't need gas, you can just pump up and down the teeter-totter, and that will drive the car forward, but, uh, what, uh, yeah, it's gonna be awful hard to get her started there, Bill. You can't just, what, oh, he must be, oh, I'll give it a push. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Oh, gosh. <laughs> These kids that don't clean up their room. Oh, it's the horse. Now well, the horse can drive. <laughs> All right, so back I go and uh, give her a little push just to get him going, and then he'll be able to... Maybe a little grease might have been an idea. There she go. Oh, I see. All right, slowly up and down. There we go. It's not going to get a lot of speed out of it, but there you go. There you are. That's work. By golly, he's working. I don't know what he does when he comes to a hill, but... You know, I, we made a little mistake. We left the key turned on. And, uh, by golly, she didn't start up, you know. <laughs> that, uh, that picked things up a little bit, you know. And then, of course, with the bounce and everything, the darn horse fell on the gas pedal. Well, not really, <laughs> not really picked things up. Right, Bill? Oh, you're fine. Hang on. Right. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We lost one. Man overboard. Oh, my God. Bill, look out. The car. The car. The car. Bill, the car. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Boy, you know, he looks good with a pipe, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, right, Bill? Wow. <laughs> Stay tuned for Garth. Something a little safer. He's been attacked by a porcupine. I really like the way the guys are dealing with uh, the gasoline shortage. We're all figuring out ways to make our vehicles burn less gas. Well, I doubt whether taking the passenger seat's going to save any weight. <laughs> hey, Harold, no passenger seat means no passenger. <laughs> Without you there beside me, not only will I have enough gas to get where I'm going, I'll arrive in a better mood. <laughs> Boy, you know, that would make a dandy recliner once I washed the Dr. Pepper out of her. Pa, huh? I guess it's a good thing you guys are using less fossil fuel now. Yeah. I couldn't believe all the extra weight you were carrying around. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, you, I, I meant your vehicle. <laughs> yeah, well. But you know, the, uh, the bunch of us have made a little wager now to... See who can go the farthest on the least amount of gas. So uh, we're all kind of cutting the weight down our vehicles. You know, all you got to do is uh, take out the duplication. You know, all you really need on any car is one headlight, one mirror, one window, one seat, one door, one accident. <laughs> hey, handyman, here's a tip for you. You know all the different kinds of glues they have out on the market right now? It doesn't matter what kind you use. If you spill it, Make sure you clean it up right away, even if it doesn't say quick drying on the can. <laughs> Guys, Harville here. Animal control has another important tip on how you can control your animals. Come on in here, Red. What happened to your arm there, Garth? Oh, there you go, there you go, Red. You, you just have to point it out, don't you? Oh. If you if, no one would even notice it if you just didn't make such a big thing about it. Well, no, I think they'd notice. What is it anyway? Well, porcupine. Really? I, I didn't think a porcupine could throw his quills. Well, he can't, Red, but a bear can throw a porcupine. <laughs> yes, well, kids, if you love animals, 
and you want to make a living at it, make sure you don't know anything about anything at all. And then go on down to the Animal Control Center, and they'll make you a boss. And try to avoid having any kind of personality whatsoever. Gareth, you have a feature for us on squirrels here today? That's, that's what I understood it was going to be. Huh? Squirrels. You're going to do something about squirrels or something. Squirrels. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, uh, yeah squirrels, yes. All right, if you're going to try to catch squirrels, make sure you don't have anything edible in your pockets. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> you got another tip about squirrels. Don't try to catch them at all. They're not nice animals. They're just, they're just rats with a hairdo. <laughs> I got a whole nest of squirrels up in my attic. So what I've done is I've, I've stuffed all the attic holes with, with this screen right here. Oh, yeah. So that should pretty much take care of the problem. All right, and now how did you chase the squirrels out of the attic before you put the screen up? How do you mean? <laughs> oh, boy. Gareth, I think you've probably trapped all the squirrels in there. I'll go take the screen down for you. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, uh, well, uh, uh, make sure you don't have anything uh, edible in your, your pockets there. All right. Red, what? Another super day. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that was a coin or something. <laughs> nice work, Harold. Well, good night, everybody. Remember, keep your no, stick no, 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 sir, no, sir. We're going to tell them what happened. Well, our most fuel-efficient vehicle thing, that went fine. But then Mr. Conscience figures he's got to stick his nose in. Well, all I said was honesty's the best policy, you know. Harold, you forced us all to go down to Ralphie's and admit that we'd been stealing gas and offer to pay him all back all the money we owed him as long as he went back to being a gas station. A suggestion? That's all it was, just a suggestion. <laughs> well, here's the kicker. He'd never not been a gas station. He just expanded to be a convenience store as well. The gas pumps were still there behind the racks of chips and maps and key fobs and carpeting. <laughs> Man, how come every gas station now has to be a department store? You know, I think you should just be happy that the gas shortage is over. Now, Harold, you made us tell the truth for nothing. That's a card sin, you'd understand that if you were married. <laughs> Meeting time, Uncle Red. Yeah, you go ahead, Harold. The men are waiting for you. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> so if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and uh, I'll gas up the weed whacker you'll be able to see out of the windows again. <laughs> and to the rest of you, thanks so much for watching. On behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. <laughs> I just want to know, okay, who ran over my hat on the road? Yeah, okay, well, next time, wait till I'm out of it. <laughs>